Guy Sharon and Clint podcast. I like it. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Guy Sharon and Clint podcast. Today, featuring our Seek intern Mon. Hi. For the last time. Oh. No, whatever. I'm just going to come back every time and just jump in, and there'll be nothing you can do about it. We sure hope you Except do. Except call security on me. <laughs> well. Except disable your swipe card. We don't have security, so. I don't Mon, know how that's going to work. Mon, you had an um, eventful day today. I'm a little bit um, annoyed by this. You actually did the first F bomb on the show. So, Whatever. congratulations. You did an F bomb the other week. No, I, I didn't. was there and it I didn't, heard it. it. That didn't make it onto air. I was disappointed. <laughs> I was hoping to do an F bomb on air. Okay. And it did, I didn't get the opportunity. It's a real privilege and an honour, and you've just taken that well, away I from us. Well, I don't feel. I feel like what little integrity I had earned over the last month as a broadcaster is all gone. Pretty all much, about, pretty much. You're not going to be allowed back. Still got all that Siggy TV stuff, though. Oh, yeah, thanks still for that, got bro. The, still got the interview with the dog oh, here yeah, and the oh, Skype yeah, reel. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty good. So, so coming, pretty good. coming up in the show, we have Mon's F-bomb, <laughs> and um, <laughs> that's all you need to know. Just listen for Mon's F-bomb. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was the best part. We also have Life Hacks, um, the Coconut Cracking Challenge. That was amazing. It was unreal, actually. Highs and lows, um, Clint's uh, blowout. Uh, we cannot put that bit in. And uh, my Sharonisms of the week. Guys, Sharon. Aaron and Clint on the edge. Let us reflect on the week that has been with highs and lows. Can we get much higher? We so got- high. <laughs> we haven't got the music yet, so we're going to sing it until Chan gets the music in. Oh. Um, Sharon, do you want to kick us off? What was your high and low of the week? Oh, my high of the week is that I have a new favourite song. Which what is, is by a girl named Megan Trainer. The song's called All About the Bass, and it's a song about not worrying about being skinny and super hot, just to love your curves and love who you are. I think it's very uplifting, and we're even going to play it for you uh, very soon as well. Cool. Uh, my low of the week, guys. <sighs> Didn't get invited to my friend's birthday party. Dang it! Oh. Yep, yep, everyone's talking about Awkward. it. Awkward. Been asked four times if, they, if they, I want to go to the birthday with them. I'm like, Did get invited, guys. <laughs> Can you remember? Didn't get the call up. I remember when I was like um, six years old and the biggest, like, if something bad happened to you on the school playground, the biggest insult you could give someone, the biggest slap in the face is, you're not getting invited to my birthday. Tell you what. You'd make people cry with that. Yep. It's happened to you. It has, guys. But um, don't worry, I'm doing okay. Can oh, I, can I go hear. next? Yeah, you're up. My high uh, for the week is that our rugby game has been cancelled this weekend. Hey! So I don't have to spend um, two hours in a sauna trying to sweat off three <laughs> kilos to get down to 85 <laughs> kgs tomorrow. And my low of the week is that I can't stop eating. Oh, oh, that's pretty welcome bad. Welcome to my life, buddy. <laughs> Do you know what's going to make that better? What? Elastic waisted pants. Amen! Track pants. No, elastic waisted pants. So I call them track pants so people will look down on them. Okay. Guy, have you got a high in a low for the week? Um, can my high of the week? I've got two highs. Yes. Um, so I'll just say well, one could be a low, though. Okay. So my first high is that I got some new glasses. Yay! Yay! My low, or slash high, oh. is that I didn't kill an old man. That's pretty good. Okay. Is that, a, is that glasses related? So we, we're doing this um, sketch where it involved me um, CPRing an old man, right? Trying to bring him back to life because he had a fake heart attack. Yeah. Turns out the old man that we got to act in the show had no heart. No heart? And what? so when I was doing the CPR, I couldn't press on his chest. Oh. So, <laughs> so as a result... Um, I got to the point where he'd fallen over and I was about to administer CPR. Yeah. I did the gross mouth bit, which was already gross because it was an old man. Yeah. I was about to press, this is while the cameras are rolling, on his chest. A girl runs in and goes, no, 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 don't touch his chest. You could kill him. Jesus. That is crazy. So that was a low followed by a high. When like, you didn't kill him. Yay! Yay! Can we get much higher? You um, don't have to sing it anymore. Oh, what? Chang has managed to source the audio for Hit us. It. Can we get much higher? There you go. Highs and lows. What's yours for the week? The best thing that happened and the worst thing that happened. First up, we're going to have Mon, who is our Seek intern. She's been with us for a month doing a great job. What's your highs and lows? Hey, thank you for that. Um, uh, okay, my high is a fake high, but I'm still holding on to it because it didn't actually happen the way I thought it happened. Okay. But you know that one time that we went go-kart racing at Formula E? Yes. yes. It was a good time. So I named myself Speed Demon Barton. Thinking I was tearing up the track, I was like, oh, there's no one else around. I must be owning it. Turns out everybody was behind me trying to lap me. <laughs> 
Um, yes. But I thought I was nailing it, so I'm going to hang on to that. Feel your pain, sister. I What's, thought you were nailing it. And I'm going to get a T-shirt with Speed Demon Barton on it. Yes, and good. Just, yeah, anyway. And my low <laughs> is um, that this is my last day. Oh. Mom! Oh. But I'm not leaving, and I'm going to chain myself to the studio door <laughs> or hide under a desk until Monday. Have you, to sounds good. You, you might not get paid anymore, but if you want to stick around, we'd love to have you. Okay, yeah. good. Yeah, Stay with that. us, babes. Yeah. Thanks. It could be like the doll. Can you get the doll if you're just volunteering? Yes, yes, you can. And in the words of Rihanna, we want you to stay. <laughs> That's oh, beautiful. Thank you. Oh, 800 The Edge. What's your highs and lows? Natalie, what is your high and your low of the week? My high is starting my new job this week. Yes. Dang, can we get much higher? <laughs> What's the job? What's the job? Um, it's the reception job. Yes. Congratulations. Um, I won't say where, but it's really awesome. Okay, fair enough. And what's your low? My low was being so, so disappointed in the new Whitaker's chocolate. Oh! oh. Hundreds and thousands. Everyone's yeah. talking about it. I haven't tried it yet. What did you rate it on 1 to 10? Um, about a 4. Oh. Oh. It's really, really sweet. And yeah. yeah. I've, sampled, I've sampled it, and I'm a huge, huge hundreds of thousands man from way back. And I'm going to come out and say it that you need the biscuit, I reckon, with it. But, okay. But the Whitakers has done an amazing job. Like, it's perfectly like the icing. Great Sam, review. So beautiful. Sam, what's your high and what's your low of the week? Um, my high is I went a 2013 high on die. Sorry? No, we said wow, we're we said, impressed. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And um my low is sort of like my girlfriend just turned into a total bitch. Whoa, <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Ups and okay. downs. What did she yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. What did she do? I can't say that. Uh you just kidding up the old friends and you know? Oh, so, 20-year-old Sound- dramas that happen in life. Sam, sounds like you need to go pick up some new ladies in your car. <laughs> go br- go yeah. do some laps. Yeah, there's nothing and girls like more than a late model Hyundai. I reckon you'll be sweet. Yep. Pulling the babes. Get in there, Sam. Get in there. And William, let's start off with your low and then finish on a high. What's yours? All right, well, my low was uh, my girlfriend dumped me Monday. Ew. Oh, we don't like her anymore? Yep. No, not really. And my high was I got a huge birthday present from my birthday being last week. Oh, Yay! what was it? What was the present? I got um this huge toolkit off my boss. There you go. Wicked. Congratulations. Oh, at least it ended positively, William. And we're going to hook you up with a late birthday present as well. Hold the line. We'll hook you up with our must-have CD this week. Hook you right, up. Thank you. Like you, it's the 90s. You've been hooked up. Hooked up. Mega hookup. Boost Remix. mobile. Oh, you guys are so <laughs> annoying. Just let me say hook it up. I'm a gangster. <laughs> From the text machine, uh, my low of the week is getting a $700 power bill, but e. my high is winning. Yay! $30. Oh, uh. a scratchy ticket. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Didn't All right. quite make up for it. Oh, here's a good one. Yeah. Um, my high was I got a new job. Um, yay! The bad news is I have to actually go to work on Monday. Oh. Uh, Guy, Sharon, and Clint on the edge. We are privileged to have in the studio senior producer Chang Hung. Welcome to the studio, Chang. Hello, Guy Williams. What's one thing that's interesting that's happened in your week this week? Um, your rock interview. That was probably the no, yeah. not can't be work related. No, oh, home be. life uh, uh, in your real life. Yeah, personal. Let's dig a little time. bit deeper. Uh, the lady friend brought me dinner last night. Oh! <laughs> is, this, is this the same lady friend whose dad emailed the yes. edge to see if you guys were going out? Oh, yes. that's, still, that's still going on then. Yes. Is Congratulations. Has the dad forgiven you yet? I think so. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Well, we won't put you back in the dog. <laughs> call, 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 call him and just check? No, no Chang. That's what got you in trouble last <laughs> time. Okay, yeah, good point, good point. You're like a relationship nightmare. Also, does she appreciate you calling her um, lady friend? No, the lady friend. So yeah. he calls her lady friend so he doesn't have to say girlfriend. Hey, do you feel bad? We don't have to girlfriend? say the name, so... No, but you can say girlfriend, can't you? No, we haven't What's gone to that step yet. Oh, you're not at the girlfriend yeah. step? What's How her name, though? No name. Gemma. No name. you no got name. to put a... She name. doesn't Was even right? have a name yet. She, she's no name. Wow, she's she's definitely but way the, off. <laughs> this is even before got to put a ring on it. you got to put a girlfriend title on it. Come on, mate. you got to lock that shit down. i got too much to lose. He's got too what many options. got too much to lose. He's got to keep playing the field. Clean. I'm waiting for Clint. Because you're a the, pimp. You're she... waiting for me. Are you... Are you, no, are you... no, no, no. I'm anyway, not my friend. Chang's here today to do his uh, cream of the crap, which is supposed to be the highlights of the week. Let's see how they sounded. Guy Sharon and Clint's cream of the crap. Early in the week, our listener Chevy decided to give us a call and tell us a story about her partner. My partner also sulks after we have sex in bed, so... What? 
because I don't like to cuddle afterwards. It's all, you know, hot and oh, yeah. gross. Okay. So I'm like, no, can you just stay over there? And then he gets shit. Shivy, <laughs> you know we're doing a conversation on the radio right now. Everyone is hearing this. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe her husband now will stop being such a pussy and just roll over and go yeah. to sleep. Whoa! <laughs> it's okay. No, it's all right. He's out working. He's not listening right now. They so have okay. radios at work. You're screwed. <laughs> <laughs> Clint was put to a lie detector test on air earlier this week, and if he lied, he was shocked by a cow product. How crap do you really think guys? surprise box is. Guy William's surprise box, I can answer this without lying, is extremely crap. Well, give him a shock anyway. Oh, 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 oh. If Guy was a girl, would you sleep with him? <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> These are be, too easy to say no to. the tallest, ugliest girl I've ever We're going to go and check the lie detector test, Mon. Uh, that one's come up as a lie. Oh, bullshit. Bullshit. Oh. Who do you like better? Out of me, Guy, and Chang. Who is your favourite out Big of the three of us? My favourite person on the show is Chang. Liar! 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 For this week's How Does It Feel, Guy wants to find out how it felt to be pepper sprayed in the face. And we did a little reenactment on here. I've got a piece of wood. Drop your weapon! Chang Hung is a policeman armed with pepper spray. Ooh. What's going to happen next? Let's find out. I'm coming to get you, Chang. Don't come any I'm closer! I'm coming to get you, I'm Don't coming to get you. Spray on the face! Ah. On your face! Ah. On your face! Ah. Drop your weapon! Ah. Drop your weapon! Ah. He's continuously spray. He's now sprayed Guy ah. in the face about six times with the pepper ah. spray. Ah. Ah. I don't want to move on! I think I'm blind! <laughs> <laughs> We had a couple of famous people on the show this week From Mythbusters, Adam Savage Who actually have worked on a lot of Hollywood special effects movies Maybe you could do the special effects in Sex and the City 3 That'll be a good movie (laughs) (laughs) I want nothing to do with that terrible movie Oh, wash your mouth out Oh, no, 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 no I have seen all of the Sex and the City shows But that movie is genuinely (laughs) off Williams was lucky enough to meet Dwayne The Rock Johnson for his new movie, Hercules. I've been telling people that you're my cousin. <clears throat> well, no, but we're brothers. We're brothers? Yes. So I can tell people that we're brothers? No, don't. Okay, why Please. not? Because. Because <laughs> I've been telling you people... You can, you should, by the way. Uh, it's uh, like looking in the mirror. Because I've been telling people that um, we're cousins and I've passed like two and a half mean babes thanks to you. What's the half? Well, one of them was a man, but he did a very good impersonation of a woman. Ah, yeah. how'd you kiss him? It was an awkward situation. Um, I got I got to first base. Oh, good. I don't want to brag about it. <laughs> you can check out that video and many other stuff you miss on our show this week on the website, theedge.co.nz. Guys, Sharon and Clint. On the edge. Sharon Casey. She's quite a quotable person. I'm right here, guys. And... Uh, <laughs> What I like to do is when we're in the studio, often we're off air and it's not being recorded, and she spits out some of the weirdest, funniest, and uh, uh, yeah, just most unusual things well, that, that I hear. that was a compliment sandwich if ever I've heard one. <laughs> <laughs> so what I do is I write them down on a little notepad, and what? I've made a new segment. I call it Sharonisms of the Week. Okay, I'm excited to hear that. I'm not. These are my favourite moments of the week, uh, and we'll start with the, my most WTF moment of the week. Saturday, the 19th of July, um, we were coming, me and Sharon were coming back from Christchurch. Uh, we're at Christchurch Airport, and Sharon pulled out this gem. I've been practicing my seizures so I can get free finger sandwiches <laughs> at the airport. <laughs> <laughs> Sharon, can you explain why this, well, explain this to people who don't know? Your love of finger sandwiches I'll has gone to a point where you're trying now different techniques on how to get them. Just to make it more exciting, and uh, because. <laughs> I don't know, maybe I'd need to get refreshments afterwards. She's seizuring. Get her some sandwiches. They're quite expensive as well, so it's like a way to get them for free. So so right now... I I'm, showed you... I showed you how I've been practicing. It was do, pretty convincing. So I'm the person at the um, at the desk, yeah. And I'm going. Um, excuse me, ma'am. Can I see your ticket? Yeah. And then what what happens from you? <laughs> and then I get on the ground. I'm like, <laughs> ma'am, whatever's wrong. Whatever's wrong. I need a finger sandwich. I've got a finger sandwich. Get her some finger sandwiches. Stretch for a finger sandwich disease. <laughs> yeah. All right. So her most. I'm not making fun of epilepsy. This is a real. <laughs> Thing that I, need, I need to have white Obs- bread with little condiments. <laughs> Her most Auckland centric sentence of the week. Tuesday, the 22nd of July. From Sharon. <laughs> 
Heaps of dogs on the North Shore are having eczema problems this time of year <laughs> because they're all allergic to grass. <laughs> it's a real thing. You could ring my vet and ask her. She's been inundated with eczema dogs. What do- What sort of pussy dog is allergic to grass? <laughs> Lots of different dogs are getting eczema, especially in the top of the North Island, because You're- it's been so warm that the spring grass has come through early and the dew that's been created in the morning is giving dogs eczema. It's a real thing. You know the people in the South Island are just laughing at our faces right now. <laughs> hey, I lived in the South Island and I had an epileptic dog, so don't even think that you're better than us. <laughs> the most instant panic moment of the week, Thursday the 24th of July. Shaz dog was very angry at me. I can't even remember why now, but she hit me with a burn and then instantly panicked. She said, well, if you don't like it, you can suck on these titties. <laughs> <laughs> and then all of a sudden she goes white as a sheet she panics and stares at me and goes oh my god was that on air <laughs> and since then that's been like the catchphrase around the office it's like whenever you say something real offensive you're like oh my god was that on, was that on air was that on air <laughs> can I just say it? can I say that I hate Chang oh my god was that on air oh my god <laughs> I don't want to have a Rachel Smalley moment. I've got a small wanger. Was that on air? Oh, my oh God. My was God. That on air? <laughs> Next on the show. I hate this segment. <laughs> was that on really air? really enjoying it. That's really good. That was, what is it? it was the Sharonisms of the week. Guy Sharon and Clint. On the edge. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the inaugural Guy Sharon and Clint Coconut Cracking Competition. Are you fired up? Yes, we are. (laughs) That was a very poor response. We have three nervous contestants in the studio fighting for a chance to win a trip to Fiji. Oh, yeah. We're going to Fiji for the Galliano Sambuca Red Card Parties. We're taking a bunch of people who have already won this uh, trip on Fiji Airways earlier in the year. We've got... One extra spot for two people, I believe. We're going to party on Beach Coma, but before we do that, we've got a bit of a competition for these guys. So one of these three contestants is going to win a double pass, am I right? Two tickets? I believe so. Well, that's usually what um, them and a friend (laughs) means. Means two. (laughs) Thank you for the sarcasm. (laughs) Let's meet our contestants. First up, we have Tessa. Tessa, have you ever cracked a coconut before? Never before. Well, you should have. You, why didn't you practice for this? That's what Google on YouTube before. <laughs> Did you actually YouTube it? Yeah, definitely. And what's the secret, do you think? I can't tell you. you don't, oh, don't want to spread it. Don't want to <laughs> spread it. Next up, we have Simon. Simon, um, say a word in Fijian. Uh, Bulla. <laughs> Bulla. And finally, we have Tessa. Tessa, you travelled all the way from Hamilton for this. Um, yeah, my name's Carla, but. Oh, sorry, <laughs> sorry girl! <laughs> Sorry, you, Carla. Jay. Carla, you travelled all the way from Hamilton for this to be abused by a Jaffa who doesn't remember your name. Carla, what is the? What do you think the secret is to cracking a coconut? Smash it. <laughs> Just smash it. <laughs> good, uh, good, good strategy, I guess. So, um, there are some rules. Yes, the rules are you have to use the tool that we give you, and you get to choose a tool in a minute. You, the first person to fill up the bottle in front of them with as much coconut. Milk, juice, what it, fluid. <laughs> Coconut fluid is the Co- technical term, I think. <laughs> Whoever gets to the Edge logo first wins the trip to Fiji. Now- so what we're going to do is that we've each got a tool that will help you with this challenge. So we're going to go one by one and you get to choose whose tool you take. Mine, Clint's or Guy's. One of the tools is pretty average, so watch out. This will have a big factor on the competition. Remember, no cracking the coconuts in the environment you can't crack it on the desk or anything like that you've just got to only use the tool so this is very important um who should go first i think we should probably uh go in order yeah um uh tessa you select one of us three um whose tool do you want um i might go with flint you'd like my tool well take this bag here we have for you inside this bag a Long screwdriver. Ooh. Not bad. Not bad when you think about the need to pierce a coconut. So there you go. That's for you. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Thank you. All right, Simon, whose tool do you want? Um, honestly, my go-to is going to be Clint, but I'm going to have to go with... Why Clint? Why Clint? <laughs> I'm a I'm unreliable. I'm a No, fingered. he's really good at go-karting, so I thought he would um just, you know, help me out on this one. Thank you, Simon, my wow. go-karting brother. I'll go with the second best go-karter, which is Sharon. Yes! <laughs> All right, my tool for you, Simon, is 
a corkscrew. <laughs> Which has got like a little drill on it. So aren't you lucky you didn't go with Clint? A corkscrew's not too bad. Carla, I am so sorry. You've got me. <laughs> That's all good. <laughs> I hey, trust you. <laughs> hey, Carla, coming from my bag right now. Oh, my God. A spatula! Congratulations! Use the blunt end. I'm backing you, Carla. Don't let me down. You've got the weight of Hamilton on your shoulders. There is not a single sharp edge on that spatula. Carla, do you feel like you've been stitched up a little bit early? Guy's taking your microphone away so we she can't said hear no, you. That's she all said good. no, she's got confidence. Okay, so basically the rules of the game. Crack a hole in the coconut, try and not spill any liquid. You've got to fill as much liquid as you can into your bottle. The first person to fill above the sticker, the Edge logo there, will win the ultimate prize. And if you have sharp edges, please don't stab yourself through the hand. Please don't stab yourself. We don't have a first aid kit. We're very poor. And we're not good with blood. Here we go. We'll start coconut cracking in three, Three, two, two, one. one, Off you go. go. And the race is on. They're off for a race. It's dripping very slowly. Simon's already getting liquid in, but he's only got one hole. Carla is whacking very... Carla's made a hole. She's cracked it. Against all the odds, Carla has cracked a hole with the spatula. Carla, Carla's up. Carla wins. Carla with the spatula. Against all the odds. All the way from Hamilton, Carla. How on earth did that happen? The corkscrew was straight in there. The screwdriver, I don't think, pierced it at all. And the spatula split it right open. I just <laughs> hammered it. <laughs> Any, um, what do you have to say for the people of Hamilton? Uh, I'd like to say thank you to my work for letting me have half a day. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to Simon and Tessa. Uh, you guys are staying home in boring old New Zealand. But Carla, you're flying Fiji Airways to Fiji with us. You're coming to uh, the Beachcomber Island. Woo-hoo! It's going to be awesome. We did get you other two a prize, though. We got you a corkscrew, a screwdriver, and a coconut. Hey! <laughs> Thank you so much, participants. Uh, feel free to drink the coconut from here. Um, we plan for this to take two breaks, so I guess we're going to find something else to talk about now. <laughs> you got in there a lot faster than we expected. Amazing. Sky, Sharon and Clint. On the edge. Last night, Clint and I were emceeing a uni party. It was Beer Fest at Bar 101 in Auckland. I've been hearing about this. I've been hearing it... Uh it took a turn for the worst. It was going really do we, well. Do we need to... Can't we just leave it on a good night? <laughs> no, no, no. Sharon and Clint no, had no, a lot no, of fun. No, 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 Everybody no. had a beer there's and then no, no, home. No, 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 no. From every good party, there's always that one moment that everyone's talking about where it all went wrong. In this moment, I have literally sat on the couch by myself today at home and I've thought of it about four or five times and laughed out loud as I remember it. Uh, it's not good. We got up, bars packed. Full full force of beer fest. Everyone's having a great time. Everyone's yelling. Typical loud bar scenario. Live band. Clint and I get up to, to do a game, and we'd done a hoedown, and people were dancing on these tables. So first of all, he gets up, and he goes, Good dancing in the hoedown, hoes. The only people left standing on the hoedown table were two hot girls that he just called hoes. And so they turned around yeah. looking really disgusted. Okay, he made it awkward at this point. No, it gets worse. And then, and then I said, congratulations, Leighton, you won a round of beers to the guy that won. And then, because we had to share a microphone, Clint grabs the microphone out of my hand because Jaden, this guy we met and his friends, had just bought him two Jägermeister shots, one after the other. Can I just say, Jägermeister and me don't mix well. I refer to Jägermeister as my kryptonite. <laughs> so the bar's still real loud, and I'm going to censor it, but he said it explicitly. Clint gets up and goes, all these ends and all these hoes, somebody here got F. And he puts his hand out, waiting for the people to, to all say the F word on the same time. And then no one replies. So he does another pump with his hand. Still no reply. As soon as he had said the N word, quoting the Dr. Dre song, the entire silence, the entire bar has been dead silent. Like you could have heard a pin drop in this oh. place. And I just put my hands over my face. And I hid behind the speaker. You know those moments when you think you're, like, real in tune with everybody? Yeah. You'd know this from doing comedy shows. Mate, and I you're just, like, I do this every day, mate. Yeah, Standard practice. Like, this bit is going to kill it. Yeah. The band who um, were... Uh, All Māori. Yeah. They looked at me, and they because they were ready to start playing, and they kind of... It was like they went... Twang. <laughs> they were 
was shocked <sighs> and offended. And then after about 30 seconds of dead silence... <laughs> <laughs> the band go, well, that was awkward. And I had the mic back by then. Clint grabs the mic from me again and goes, Sharon's real embarrassed of me, but that was a good song. Am I right? Still silence. The band goes, okay, it's getting more awkward. And they start playing the song. All I'm, all I'm saying is my rhymes are underrated <laughs> and I'm available for parties. <laughs> if you want someone to come and MC. Freestyle, offend your parents. <laughs> no, don't. Do you do um, engagement parties? Engagement well? parties. I'll do funerals. I'll do... Oh, look, I'll do whatever it takes. But, yeah, it was awkward. It's gone now. Thank you for bringing it up. Can we move on? If you were there, text in about it. Yeah. <laughs> text in, 3343. Guys, Sharon and Clint. On the bloody edge. We've been helping out people this week who needed an extra zero in their life, all thanks to BNZ's low-rate MasterCard. And we have got one of our people on the line right now. Hello, Nick. Hello. Hello. Happy Friday. Happy Friday to you too. Nick, you had a bit of a problem, mate. You've got some problems going on in your life. Oh, it's a major problem, mate. You have no idea. You decided to write a letter about it and we've recreated it. Oh, did you now? That sounds awesome. Yeah. Have a listen to your life um, with a bit of a Hollywood radio makeover. Here we go. Oh, I can't. So, my good friend's recently opened a gym, and it's great, don't get me wrong. But you see, the problem is they've got five squat racks, right, bro? And only one bench press? And I'm all for getting that deep burn in my quads. But what happens when I walk in on Monday, that's International Chest Day for you cardio bunnies, and the single bench press is taken. Everybody knows you can't just sit and wait for it to free up, otherwise your pre-workout hyper juice will wear off and you'll be about as useless as a sandwich in an American bakery. Alright, I've got no clue how much a bench press costs, but I'd love for you guys to be able to chip in. Please help me get the mountain of a chest I truly desire, and in return I shall dedicate an Instagram photo to the edge and all its awesomeness. Wow. Hashtag gains. Hashtag get them games. That is my favourite letter so far. Nick, did you write that? I did. It was a creative morning, that one. <laughs> it, sounds like, it sounds like you had like, too much of your workout juice beforehand and then wrote that letter. Yeah, I might have had two scoops that morning. It was a two-scoop morning and you banged out an email. Nick, what, why do you need such a big chest? What, what's good about having a big chest? Well, I got these giant legs, right? Okay. But if you got a small chest and giant legs, you just look like a bit of a monkey. Okay. And I don't, I don't like looking like a monkey, so I want to look like a, a normal person for once in my life. You're, oh you're my bottom, God. you're bottom heavy at the moment, so you're trying to balance things out. Well, I never fall over. That's I guess that's a bonus. <laughs> Nick, I actually love you. You're amazing. We are going to hook you up with five hundred bucks on a BNZ low rate Mastercard. Okay. Oh, thank you so much. Go, All right, bro. Go get them gains, yeah. boy. And maybe just lay I'll off the there, maybe lay off the super pump for a day or so. You know I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> That is all thanks to uh, the BNZ Low Rate Mastercard. 0% interest on purchases for six months and no fees for a year. More money to give away at 5.30 and more money next week as well. So go and register for it at theedge.co.nz. Can we give more to him? (laughs) Can we just have Nick on all the time? Guys, Sharon and Clint. I I reckon we've almost found, like, the next great Kiwi viral video. Yeah, I think we might have. Well, hey, whoa. Don't take credit where credit's due. Chang found the video. Well done, Chang. Round of applause. Chang. We give you a lot of crap, mate, but sometimes, and let's say, let's be honest, a few and far between, we're proud of you, mate. And this is one of those (laughs) times. Chang is one of those legends who just watches, like, Everything, Everything on TV. Yeah. He's like a pop culture vacuum, and he was watching one of those weird, blurry face cop shows they play on every channel these days, and uh, he came across a moment of gold. A cop on State Highway 1, somewhere quite rural, um, who takes to a sheep with an assault rifle. <laughs> it's quite weird. Only in New Zealand, eh? Have a listen. The sheep dies instantly. It's a sad end, but hopefully not as sad as it might have been had the sheep caused an accident. No, definitely not what I wanted to do. It gave me no options. I'm very sad about doing that. Very sad indeed. <laughs> gave no options. Not a good end. I, 
I, I, he's he's a good cop. He hasn't done anything wrong here. No, I think I w- don't think he was that sad about it though, <laughs> because he got to use his assault rifle. <laughs> but it is, but he did. Imagine if a family of five travelling to crash into that sheep could have caused a serious accident. So oh mate, there have been a few people that have been like, oh, that's so mean to the animals, blah blah blah. But it's like, well. It potentially saved somebody's life. I'm not an animal expert, though. But why didn't he just put down his massive assault rifle and go and just, like, pick up the sheaf and chuck it <laughs> over the fence? <laughs> Nobody knows. The video, though, is is becoming, like, one of those blow-on-the-pie-type moments. Mm-hmm. We put it up on Facebook last night on our Facebook page. Um, since it went up less than 24 hours ago, it's been seen by almost three-quarter of a million people. <laughs> So go on www.facebook.com. I don't know why I say facebook.com. Um, slash Edge Afternoons or search Guy, Sharon and Clint. And um, share the video. Show it around. Have a look. Have a laugh. Beware, though. You do see a sheep being shot by a cop. Oh, yeah. Do we say caution With a it? very big gun. Is that safe for work? Not safe for work? Uh, it's safe for work. Kind of safe for work. There's no breasts. You don't see the sheep's private work. parts. Mm. So, yeah, it's all right. <laughs> it's uh, Guy, Sharon and Clint. On the Edge. Life hack. <laughs> Entry granted. It's Friday. It's time to hack life. These are the like little things you can do to make your life just a little bit better or sometimes worse. Someone texted in to say my life hack con- contribution is any supposedly good life hack that Guy Williams comes up with is absolutely and utter- utterly crap. <laughs> life hack. Entry granted. Here's another one from the text machine. Got your last exam this morning that you've done no study for? Just pretend you're dead. It's the only option. Life hack. (laughs) Life hack. Entry granted. On the phone. Georgia, what's your life hack? Hey, um, so save an old parking ticket and then next time you park illegally, just put it under your wiper. (laughs) (laughs) My life hack. Has it ever worked before? No, I haven't. I can't even drive yet. <laughs> I've got a feeling that's not going to work. I'm it sorry could to tell work, you. Though. If you've got a lazy parking warden, it could work. They're going to be pretty bloody lazy, and Although, they love putting out fines. If the parking ticket is from 2013, they're going to go, this person's <laughs> been parked here for a year and a half, and then you'll get a pretty Maximum big... Maximum fine. <laughs> Georgia? Life hack. Entry granted. Grace, what's your life hack? Um, if you want your bananas to last longer in the fruit bowl, you should separate them all out. And if you want other fruits to ripen faster, you should put them with the bananas. Oh, I have heard that one before. How does that even work? I don't know. It must be like some sort of <laughs> thing in the bananas that makes them ripen faster. <laughs> some, <laughs> some superpower that bananas have. Georgia, what would yeah, you Yeah, some s- sort of magic power. What would you say if I said this sounds like bullshit? Um, it's not bullshit because <laughs> I've tried it before. Good comeback. <laughs> Life hack. Entry granted. Mitch, what about you? What's your life hack? Uh, so my life hack, you know when you eat a Big Mac burger? Yeah. <laughs> I know it well. I know yeah. it well. Yeah, I bet you do. Uh, so uh, anyway, you put your pinky finger under the carton and with the remaining fingers, you hold the burger so that way you don't spill it everywhere. I mean, half the time they make those things pretty poor. Right, oh, so we don't get, like, dribs all over our hands and stuff. Okay. Yeah, you don't, get, you don't get lettuce everywhere, and so, you know, if you're on the go driving, you know, you don't yeah. make a mess or anything. I was going to say, this yeah. will stop you getting Big Mac on your crotch while you're driving, which is a big problem for you, Guy. This is the story of my life, because the reason the drive through was invented is so you can eat while driving. It saves time. That's a life hack in many ways. <laughs> exactly. The so problem is, the technique for that. it looks like you got sex stains on your pants, so thank you so much, sir. <laughs> life hack. Entry granted. I got one. More, I got one more life break before we, we go to the break. Okay. Um, uh, if you're worried about getting Big Mac uh, sex stains on your pants when you're driving and eating, just um, drive with no pants on. <laughs> life hack. Life not hacked. No entry. That's permissible. a good one. Don't look at me like that. The pers- Keep the- them coming in. I hundred the edge of text into three three four three. The person in the drive through window would see straight down into your car. <laughs> and then they'd know what the truth was about you. Life hack. Entry granted. Oh, I've got one. Um, instead of smoking, um, if you want to kill yourself, just slowly let blood out of your veins. It's cheaper <laughs> and a lot easier and less painful for everybody involved. Life hack. <laughs> entry granted. Oh, they got an entry granted. Yes, you must have pressed the wrong I don't know something. Now, we have a guest life hacker right here. Welcome to the studio, uh, Seek Intern Mon. Hello. 
Mon, what's your life? Hello. Like? <laughs> Hello. Um, if right. you want to start a radio segment, go, Hello. Yeah, I feel like that's how I'm going to start everything. What's your life hack? Um, so, if you would like to preserve the life of your batteries, um, only put them in your clock. Uh, fuck, uh, when, sorry, <laughs> God, I think Mon just dropped only, a bit of F bomb on air. Only put them in your clock when you need to tell the time. <laughs> Mon just dropped an F bomb on the radio. It was only three quarters of on one. On the last yes, day of her interview. Life hack. Life not hacked. No entry permissible. If Mon, no. we'd fire you, but you're out of a job this afternoon <laughs> that's, anyway. That's a life, that is a life hack right there. It was only it, three quarters. I didn't say the whole word. If you, wanna, you really did. You really did. I really if, didn't. If you want to <laughs> if, if you wanna drop an F-bomb on air, do it on your last day on the job. <laughs> Josh, what's your life hack? Um, when you bring your tongue when you're like, out for tea or something... Mm-hmm. Um, you put bread onto your tongue and it goes away pretty much straight away. That is insane. Like, how, I don't yeah. understand how that even works. Neither do I, but it works. The cooling, soothing power of bread. Does it have yeah. to be? Does it have to be a certain type of bread? Does it have to be white bread or brown bread? Just any bread. Just white bread and it works straight away. What if it's toasted? Oh, I don't know. Probably not. But yeah, white bread, eh? Works. That is awesome. I, want, I kind of I want to burn that. my tongue right now to find out if this is true. Let's get that sorted and we'll do that for you. <laughs> no. <laughs> Life hack. Entry granted. And Catherine, what's your one? If you're allergic to cheap earrings, if you coat them with clear nail polish, you'll be sorted. Oh, that's a good trick. How does it, does it like block the crappy silver and stuff? Yeah, so it just it gives it that coating, and yeah, then your earrings don't get all red and itchy. How can you be allergic to cheap earrings? Is it because you're all posh and snobby? And like, I can't have those cheap ass <laughs> earrings in my house. No, I, that's why I can't wear earrings. I can only wear sterling silver your, earrings. Your ears, Anything oh. else? Yeah. Your ears have got too much good taste for them. Yeah, yeah. everything else just makes my ears swell up and gross. <laughs> it looks like I'm wearing earrings, yeah. but it's actually just pus. Life hack. Entry granted. That's right, you Pussy heard it here first. I'm a sexy beast. Michael, what is your life hack? Uh, so, when you're trying to eat pizza in the car, yeah. you <laughs> open the box away from yourself, yeah. and then the lid of the pizza box becomes a big napkin so you don't get barbecue sauce on your white shirt. Ah, uh, this is genius. Life hack. Entry granted. Michael, are you eating pizza while you're driving? Um, I have done so before. <laughs> it sounds like a danger to me, Michael. And finally, Steve, what is your life hack? Uh, this is my uh, little secret, but I'll share it with you guys because you're cool. Okay. Um, <laughs> thanks, thanks, Steve. We love you too. Um, so, you know, um, the extra gum, you know, extra gum, Wrigley's extra gum? Yes. Um, so they come in like a credit card size pack. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Which conveniently fits on my credit card. So okay, my wallet. Steve, let me stop you there because this used to be my life hack. But they don't do it anymore. They've doubled the width of the extra. You can only get them in doubles now, and they don't fit into your wallet anymore. Uh, no, 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 no. I use the the, the gum pack as my wallet. <laughs> you use the gu- <laughs> oh. oh. Genius. So you've gone the other way. You've put your money in the chewing gum rather than putting yeah, your chewing gum well, in the wallet. I mean, I buy some gum and then I've got a free wallet. So <laughs> we can we it. cannot fight That's you on that. Life hack. Entry granted. Man, yeah, man, was like, that good? How, yeah, that was fantastic. How good yeah. must his life be? Eh? It's like you buy a bottle of Coke, got a free bottle. Oh, yeah. <laughs> buy, a, buy a bag of washing powder, tip out the washing powder, got a free bag to put your kid in. <laughs> Steve, <laughs> thank you so much for your life. <laughs> Guy Sharon and Clint. Edge. We've got a lot of money to give away at the moment. 35 Gs, actually, thanks to BNZ. If you need a zero, you just tell us why. A zero is money, and we can give it to you if your story's good enough. Lilia, we heard your story online. Are you feeling lucky right now? Oh, yes. Are you sure? We could just be ringing yeah. up to mess with your mind. Yeah. <laughs> we could be ringing... No. Oh, you guys, you're the nicest ones out there. So oh, yeah. Oh, I yeah. reckon it's something good, something oh, good. Oh, you twisted my arm on that one. Well, I'm we, not very nice. We've got Mon, our intern, intern, to tell your story, so listen back. Okay. Hi, guys. My name's Lilia, and I'm an addict. Hi, Lilia. I'm addicted to the hot cup of fresh coffee in these cold winter mornings and I can't stop or probably function without one. I've tried to quit, but unsuccessfully so far. Now I'm on a strict budget and I just cannot afford a $4 coffee every morning. The only thing that can save me and get me through these tough times will be a coffee machine. Please help me support my addiction while still sticking to the budget. <laughs> it sounds like you really need your coffee, Lilia. 
I do. I I walk around like a zombie most of the day. I tried everything. I just I find it really hard to get out of bed in the first place. Have you it's tried? So cold. Have you tried cocaine? <laughs> um, Guy, I tried, it just became really really hard to get it this day. No, <laughs> you heard of my budget. Don't listen. You know? Don't listen. Don't listen. Hey, we are going to fix your coffee problem for you, Lilia. We are going to hook you up with five hundred dollars on a BNZ low rate Mastercard. Oh my god, that's amazing! Thank you guys. So we, much. We, no worries. With that kind of money, you could get like two Nespresso machines. You could have one at home and then one beside your desk at work and Ooh, just be yeah. pinging out maybe, all day on the coffee. Maybe there'll be a little bit less for some cocaine as well. Oh, no, 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 none of it. No, 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 just kidding. That's, no, 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 coffee. That's, that's my... <laughs> Lilia, we'll get a hook you up with the coffee machine, so just wait there. We're going to give you the money on a credit card because I don't think that drug dealers take um, no, a sure, low rate Mastercard. Sure. <laughs> BNZ is helping you be good with money with the BNZ low rate Mastercard. If you want more details, just go to bnz.co.in. Guy Sharon and Clint's itch. It's time for everybody's favourite moment when we talk and cyclone. It's called a goddamn conversation cyclone. The idea of a conversation cyclone is you drop one piece of conversation into the cyclone and then for two minutes you just banter back and forth and you find out where you end at the end of the cyclone to see where it's blown you to. I need, whoa, I need to do the uh, <laughs> timer. I had a night owl as our thing the other day, so t- today I think I'm going to go with the twinkles. <coughs> All right, let's get it started. So, my, I'm going to pick the word today. The word is Leon. Leon's our boss. He's our commander-in-chief. He's also my favourite rugby player when I was growing up. He played for the Crusaders. His name was Leon McDonald. And he stopped being my favourite rugby player when I read a pre- I went to a Crusaders game, which is a huge deal for me because I was from Nelson, so yeah. he didn't get to go down very often. And in the magazine, in his, in his player profile, it asked him what his favourite book was. And I was so excited to find out what Leon McDonald's favourite book was. <laughs> and he chose FHM Magazine. No! Oh. Ha- bear in mind... <laughs> Bear in mind, Leon McDonald has suffered several concussions in his career, and he may have been um, concussed when they asked him that question, and then it wouldn't be fair, would And it? he definitely got it for the articles. His favourite book is a titty magazine. Is FHM still a magazine? I feel like one of them got no. shut down, FHM or Ralph or... Yeah, FHM kind of got shut down, but weirdly they still subscribe to it, the Nelson Public Library. <laughs> That is so strange. It's like the librarians just like they're like we've got to keep the FHM Titty magazine coming, so we'll um we'll start making our own one featuring librarians or something. It's I, so weird, like when you used to be able to go to the library and you could get out magazines and they'd always Duracell with the clear Duracell. Yuck, it's like, yeah. Why? Why? Just tell the person to go and spend three dollars buying the TV hits in the shop. Is it me being a germaphobe, or does anyone else find it real gross to read a secondhand magazine? I don't like anyone. If I buy a magazine, if someone reads it before me, it makes me really uncomfortable. And guy did this to me on a plane uh, recently because I like being the first person to read it. And the yeah. whole time I was reading my magazine, I was looking at the other magazine that I bought. Evelyn Guy, like get your off my magazine. I wanted to be the person to read it. Now the page is going to be all crazy and you would have touched it before me. It's also extra yuck to get a secondhand FHM. Oh, most definitely. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with uh, a secondhand FHM, mate. Some of my best childhood memories and come from secondhand <laughs> FHMs. Another thing on our buzzword, we could uh, just call anyone named Leon Noel because that is their name backwards. Wow. Did you know that? No. It's pretty good. You, you can't call Alana her name backwards. Okay. You can call a, Noel, a Leon his name you've backwards. Just, you've just blown us all the way back to Leon in the conversation slight clone by the Oh, no. We've, we've stayed on Leon and we've finished on Leon. A little bit disappointing, but we went to some weird and wonderful places. That was another conversation cyclone. <laughs> Feel free to do it with your friends this weekend. Especially do the sound. Just walk into a room full of people, start making that sound, and they'll be like, I know what that means. <laughs> it means a conversation cyclone. This guy Sharon and Clint on the edge. I just had a sandwich from the most ridiculous uh, hipster cafe of all time. Subway. No, not Subway. <laughs> Star Mart. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, uh, um, it was a little place down in Newmarket, but it's not like... Because N- N- Newmarket's quite mainstream, right? It's pretty much straight up and down. Like, it's just it's just a rich Auckland street. Yeah. Just off it, off the beaten track, there's, like, a couple of, like, old warehouses, which is hipster paradise, right? Ooh. You want a bit of a rusty wall, and you want to get all the other brick walls, and you want to paint them white. That's the first step to a good hipster cafe. Okay. Perfect. Then, Exposed brick. Yeah, and then you want to get like the r- most rugged furniture you can find. Uh, beer crates is fine. 
Um, but you've got to paint that old white as well, so make it sterile. School okay. chairs. And a good, it's a good idea to get some... Yeah, you could do some school chairs. That's perfect. And get some milk bottles and put some flowers in it. And get some, um, some uh, like, what are those... What, like, you know the stuff Pavlova's made out of? Meringue. You know, get some meringues and, like, stick them in a glass jar. That's, um, that's also important. That's good. And have macaroons somewhere around the joint. This place was so authentically hipster... It was not only in a warehouse, it was in a warehouse that was a fabric shop. <laughs> you Crazy. can't get any better than that. It was like um, it was like Instagram.com. Like, you felt like the whole place had a filter on it. You were inside Instagram. Everyone in there was so cool. They had hats on, even though we were inside. I'm just trying to remember the name of it. Just give me a second just to grab my lunch bag. Um, it was called... Did you bring us anything? Little and Friday. It's actually excellent. So I'd like to recommend it while I'm laughing at it. Yes. Because as soon as I heard Little and Friday, I was like... Perfect. That's exactly what it's bloody called. That's how you name a, hist- uh, a hipster rest- restaurant. You give it something and something. Yeah, I think it might be something and like a, a name and a thing. It-, it can almost not make sense. So little and Friday so like, could, could doesn't I, make any sense. Could I be uh, Sharon and Burger? No. Why not? <laughs> that would be an excellent name for a that is a great name for a restaurant. Would be like Sharon loves burgers or something like that. Okay. I was thinking more. You want like a hipstery kind of vibe, so hipsters into like scarves, typewriters. So I'd think of something like like maybe the fox and the typewriter or something like that. That is that sounds like uh, the most hips. You would not get a panini in there. It's, um, <laughs> my uh, cousin actually has something uh, a a uh, bloody. Don't say the South Street Gallery. No, she, she has, I can't remember the other side. But she has a, a, a craft thing that is the fox and something. I can't remember yeah, what the other thing yeah, is Yeah, that would be a perfect... You've got to put... If you're I going to have fox something, and the squirrel. Fox, fox and the squirrel would be great. Or you could call it like the... Um, the Bicycle and the Swan. That'd be a great name for a hipster cafe. What bicycle about, and Swan. What about SW4 Burger? No, mm. again, you just don't have a clue how to do this. Clint, okay. you got any ideas, mate? Um, Mildred and Beagle. So straight away... <laughs> So I, I'm just going name and thing. Oh, oh, oh I've got one, I've got one, I've got one, I've got one, I've got one. Um, French Bulldog and Scone. <laughs> oh, no. Love French I don't think you've got the cadence there. Okay, okay, think. okay, okay. Give me um, uh, Williamson and Co. Yes! Right Williamson there. and Co. Co's the, a good one to put in and there. And Co, yeah, for sure. The Fox and the Muffin. Almost there. Try, try like, try like your name. Say. What's your last name? Casey. Casey. Try Casey and Fox. Perfect. Okay. The key is the two things cannot relate at all. So you can imagine a fox enjoying a muffin. Yeah. But it has to be two (laughs) things. They they, (laughs) they just love a muffin. A fox would love a muffin. They love foxes. They sit there in a little crate outside with his friends with a little little bowl. Now you you understand. And now Fox is like, oh, can I have another muffin? Yes, Mr. Fox, you can. Okay, okay. Now you understand the secret to uh, hipster cafes. Yeah, so Fox and a muffin was perfect. Fox and muffin. Maybe chuck it, chuck, um, call it like an ale house or a co-op or something like that. Yes. Oh, oh, boutique beers and biscuits. Refinery. The co-op. <laughs> <laughs> the boutique beers and biscuits co-op refinery. We've nailed it, guys. Good guy. Sharon and Clint on the edge. Chang let someone down today. Oh, always, Chang. I'm always letting someone down. He mentioned she who must not be named. His, Dumbledore. His friend that is not his... <laughs> Female no, friend. Uh, <laughs> we just rewind two seconds. He goes, she who must not be named, and Chang drops in a topical pop culture reference. Dumbledore, you're looking for Voldemort, mate. Oh, yeah, sorry, my bad. I feel bad that I just said it. There's Harry Potter fans who will be like, you can't believe you just said Voldemort. And I've said it again. Dumbledore. And you can't even call your... Uh, girlfriend. Girlfriend Voldemort a- anyway. Go, yeah, no. she, said, she said, lady friend. Question mark? Question mark? Is yeah. That, oh. Earlier, yeah, earlier reminds, in the show, yeah. Chang referred to her. Yes. Earlier in the show, Chang referred to her as his lady friend because he's too scared to call her his girlfriend. Not realizing that you were doing it on a radio station <laughs> that everybody can listen to for free. I so, reckon that he's done that on purpose because now they have to define their relationship. They've yeah. got a DTR, guys. I reckon it's because What's DTR, like the the store. Define the relationship. I reckon it's because it was date night and it was Chang's turn to pay, so he decided to cause a fight so he didn't have to take her out. That is actually probably what happened. No, I'm really broke at the moment, so. Really? That's yeah. nothing new? <laughs> no, so that's probably true. Guy Sharon and Clint. On the edge! For you are the wind beneath my wings.
Welcome to the end of the show, a segment we call Win Beneath Your Wing, something inspirational. Um, it might be my turn to do it today. No, you're... We're not going to have this conversation Look, it's every me. night at this time. You're banned until further notice. It's and me every, or Chang. Who would you rather? Every Chang. time, every time <laughs> you ask, it, the ban is going to be extended. So just put a Fine, sock in Chang, it. Fine, Chang. Hurry up. All right. The, today's Win Beneath Your Wind is from a very famous guy that Guy Williams interviewed this week. Oh, wow. Dwayne The Rock Johnson. He does a lot of inspirational quotes. Mm-hmm. And I thought this was pretty perfect to end the week with. Mm-hmm. I, uh, it's too quiet. <laughs> Here it is. Keep chasing greatness. Is that it? That's it. Keep, Keep chasing, chasing greatness. greatness. That was that was from my interview, yeah. you right? Yeah. And you've had to see. Keep chasing greatness. <laughs> yeah. Just played a few times. You've had to see Keep the fall into Re- on the Edge TV. Repetition builds uh, reputation, so we'll just keep on playing. It. Guy Sharon and Clint on the Edge. Thank you, everybody. That's the podcast done and dusted for another week. Thank you so much for listening. <laughs> Who the fuck is this? <laughs> that was just me doing a funny voice. Oh, I didn't mean to swear just then. You did it! Every day, though. It's different sh- on the podcast. Sh- that, was di- that was just me. I was just putting on a funny voice. I was like, is, who's this? Is this a Stuffing snake that we haven't met? Has. No, I don't, have a, I don't know any snakes. Were you trying to do Sylvester <laughs> and it backfired and so then you pretended it was nothing? No, I was just being silly. You're a silly duck. Thank you so much for listening it's to the. It's me, Happy. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening to the podcast. We really appreciate it. And, Don't you um, want to talk to your friend, Happy? I'm Share never, it again sometime. I've never been an advocate for shooting dolphins until Happy kept invading the podcast. That's not very nice, Clint. I'm a lovely dolphin, <laughs> and I flip her around. See you later. The guys, Sharon and Clint podcast.